Okay, so this is our site, a bit echoing here, so over there. Uh, this is the alcove. Um, we've just taken the skirting boards off. A little bit of multi-tool work and uh, hammer and chisel. And now we've got to uh, get the plinth fitted in and leveled off. Once that's done, uh, I can get the rest of the skirtings trimmed back uh, and get the uh, base cabinet in. Again, to tell you what you do, spend half your life doing maintenance. Oh, batteries died in my fancy pants digital level. The only spare one I've got is from the microphone. <laughs> but I don't want to put the new one in the level just in case the microphone pegs out because I haven't changed that for a while. So I'm going to have to take the one off the microphone and put the, that one in the level and put the new one in the microphone. And I can't get the microphone off so I'm going to use a flipping spanner to do that. It's just one thing after another this morning. I'll be a minute. With the plinth levelled up with little wooden wedges, it's fixed in place with small brackets secured directly to the floor. Then small feet made from scrap are fixed to the plinth to bear the weight. With the plinth fix, we can offer up the capping piece, trimming the sides to length and the front piece to height. before fixing them all in place with a headless pinner. And with all that done, we can bring in the cabinet carcass. Okay. Right. So the cabinet is a pretty tight fit in this alcove. There's only, you know, six mil or so either side. Uh, and I have, <laughs> For you, for those of you who have seen my uh, uh, window seat video, <laughs> you might know when I make things a bit snug, it doesn't always go right. Um, but I have checked this out quite carefully. These these alcoves have been replastered very recently, and they are pretty good. In fact, the, the wall falls away slightly as it goes up. So, um, uh, so I think all I'm trying to do really is get this central. So that I only nibble away enough of the skirting board. So, so I only nibble away the minimum of the skirting board is what I'm trying to say. So it's just over six on that side. It's just over six on that side. So I think that's pretty good. So we'll come to there on each side. And we can take this away. With the skirting marked, it's an easy job to trim them back with a multi-tool and check the carcass for a snug fit. I'm fitting a sheet of translucent Corex to the back of the carcass, then pushing it into position and marking the edges of the socket outlet with a sharpie. Then it's an easy job to transfer these marks to the carcass back and make a cutout with a multi-tool. With the screws removed and the faceplate loosened, we can fix the back to the carcass and bring this into position carefully feeding the faceplate through our cutout before fixing it back in place with the original screws, or longer ones if needed. And fixing the carcass to the plinth with the lost tight screws. Then with everything secured, we can fit the doors. Look at that. 
Okay, we can live with that. Whew. So, camera in. Uh, no dramas or crises, particularly. Um, it's all looking quite nice. We've got a little, little gap to fill in there, but it's easy. Uh, next thing we're going to do, so it's a bit echoey in here. Is the sound on? It is on. Uh, it's a bit echoey in here. Um, I've got a template at the top, because the top has to follow this very closely, so that you just get the lipping around the edge. It overhangs the front very slightly, by six mil or so. Uh, and the only way to get that accurate is to, to template it, to uh, use bits of uh, Corex, that's what I'm going to do now. There's no shortcut to this, you simply have to template the area as closely as you can, then transfer this to the top and cut it to size outside. What can often happen is when a plasterer, it's almost impossible not to, but when you come into or out of a corner like that, it just curves very slightly. And to get these to fit nicely, you've just got to take that curve away. None of this will be seen because the bookcase will actually cover that. Um, that's six mil overhang at the front, and that's still a fraction more. There we go. That's it. So that fitting nicely. What I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to mark where the ends come on the wall. So I'm going to cut a little bit of D profile around this so that it fits nicely. Um, but I'm actually going to run this back to the workshop to do that uh, because I've got to go and get the bookcase part anyway because I couldn't go bring it all at once. So I'll do that because uh, it's easier to cut those mitres and a mitre saw than, than trying to do them by hand. Um, and that will all work out beautifully. Back at the workshop it's easy to trim the lipping to size and glue this in place, holding it together with some tape just for now. That's all feeling pretty well, and I'm sorry the colour's going to be leaping around all over the place in here. We've got sort of a really nasty mix of incandescent and, uh, uh, and daylight. <coughs> um, so that's all pretty good. That fits quite nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fit, pop a few screws through that. I'm going to drill a hole in the centre of this to get cables through for lamps and that sort of stuff. So uh, I'll do that next, but I'm going to leave the... Um, Leave the tape on for now because it hasn't been gluing for that long. I'll just fix it in position from underneath uh, and then we can um, get that hole drawn. Then it'll all come off again. All the tape will come off, we'll give it a coat of paint, it will go back on. At the risk of stating the obvious, you need to check your screw sizes quite carefully before you do this because the last thing you want is a screw popping up through the. Uh, through the top here. With the hole drilled and cleaned up, we can remove the tape and refit the top, adding a touch of paint around the inside of the hole. I also like to wedge the top in place, trimming the wedges back flush with the top. <laughs> 